One of the breakout stars of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was the rebellious Hobie Brown, aka Spider-Punk. Embodying the do-it-yourself anti-establishment morality of the 1970s punk rock uprising, Hobie is unlike any Spider-Man we've seen before and sure to be a fan favorite after the general masses see this film. Personally, I can't wait for my kids to start speaking in Cockney slang around the house and challenging my authority. Comic readers and Spider fans have already had Hobby on their radar for years, but having recently been featured in the massive film and his own limited solo comic series, Hobby is poised to break out in a big way. Today's video isn't going to cover every single story he's been in, but it will cover most of the important ones and his history. Today, I bring you the complete Marvel history of the anarchic Spider-Man. Hobart Brown, or Hobie for short, made his comic book debut in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3, Issue Number 10 by Dan Slott and Oliver Coypel. But we aren't really going to talk about that comic much. We're going to kind of discuss the event that it's part of. Now, to first understand Hobie Brown's introduction, you need to understand the circumstances under which he was first created. If you want to skip that and just jump to his in-universe origins and stories, follow the timestamp on the screen now. During the 2014 run of Amazing Spider-Man, we were first introduced to the concept of the Spider-Verse, which is crazy to think about the fact that the Spider-Verse is less than 10 years old. But the concept of a web of spider people all interconnected across dimensions is a fairly new concept. In Spider-Verse, a group of powerful beings known as the Inheritors, who are essentially cross-dimensional vampires who feed on spider people, set out to hunt and kill various versions of Spider-Man across the multiverse. Inheritors, of which the most famous is Morlin, feed on the life force of those with spider powers, who are referred to as spider totems, or avatars of the mystical spider power that links all Spider-Man together. You still with me? Good, because it's not easy to grasp. The spider totem is a powerful force that exists across different dimensions and universes and is believed to be responsible for granting individuals their spider powers and guiding them in their role as Spider-Man. The spider totem represents the collective power, knowledge, and destiny of all those who bear the mantle of Spider-Man. This concept of a spider totem hasn't been super popular with comic readers, and the film Across the Spider-Verse effectively takes this concept and changes it slightly, replacing the concept of totems with canon events, a set of things that happen to every Spider-Man to cement them as a true spider person. The main protagonist of the Spider-Verse story is the original Spider-Man, Peter Parker, but he's soon joined by other versions of Spider-Man from across different universes, including Spider-Woman, Spider-Man 2099, Spider-Gwen, and many others, including Hobie Brown, aka Spider-Punk. In the films, Hobie is British, but in the comics, he's actually an American whose original costume was inspired by UK punk music. Originally, Oliver Coypel wanted to use this costume for Spider-UK, a different dimension Spider-Man, but was ultimately rejected. However, Dan Slott, the creator of Spider-Punk, liked the costume idea so much they just made a whole new character out of it. Together, various Spider-Man form an alliance called the Spider Army to fight against the Inheritors. Hobie was instrumental in the victory by helping recruit a rogue Inheritor, Karn, to the Spider side. Wambu bam, they eventually win, but not without some losses along the way. While this is important to know, it's not crucial to understand exactly who Hobie is. I want to spend more time today discussing Hobie's origin and stories within his own universe rather than spend the majority of this video on the Spider-Verse adventures. Hobie Brown's comic origin is shown in 2015's Spider-Verse Volume 2 in a short story called With Great Power Comes No Future by Jed McKay. Hobie hails from Earth-138, an alternate Earth where Norman Osborn had become president and created a nationwide authoritarian regime armed with super soldiers to enforce his policies. Hobie's origin as Spider-Man isn't shown in the issue, but we're told that he was bitten by a radioactive spider that became irradiated from toxic waste that was illegally dumped by Oscorp. Inspired by the greatest punk rock musician of Earth-138, Gwen Stacy, Hobie dubs himself the Anarchic Spider-Man, a radioactive suicide machine. Hobie stands up against the forces of Oscorp and their corrupt leader. Osborn has created an army of fascist police using supersuits made of Variable Engagement Neuroorganic Mesh, or Venom for short. While not technically symbiotes, this material acts in a similar manner. As Osborn sweeps over the country, Spider-Man forms his own spider army of the downtrodden, who had all been crushed under the impressive regime of Oscorp. The ragtag spider army, including Captain Anarchy, face down Oscorp, armed with only makeshift weaponry, a guitar, and a massive stack of speakers. 
Spider-Punk unleashes a massive guitar riff that causes the Venom suits to malfunction. Now in a weakened state, the Spider Army beats back the Oscorp forces and Hobie literally kills Norman Osborn in front of the masses by cutting his head off with a guitar. Hobie is heralded as a true hero and recruited into the Spider-Verse for his heart and bravery, but damn is that brutal. After the events of Spider-Verse, Hobie returns home to massive fan acclaim and puts on a huge concert that turns into a knockdown dragout fight with Tombstone Records. Hobie even joins forces with an alternate dimension's Gwen Stacy, who he idolizes to stop a group of multi-dimensional electros by, what else, putting on a massive dimension-shattering rock concert. Another story saw Hobie return home to find a variant of Kang the Conqueror named Kang the Conglomerator had much to Hobie's horror purchased the rights to Spider-Punk's likeness and music and turned him into a merchandising powerhouse. Kang even wanted to kidnap him to continue generating profits off of him forever. Despite defeating Kang with help from his universe's version of Captain America and Hulk, Hobie was disheartened to learn from Kang that across space and time, he was always destined to die young. Currently in Marvel Comics, we have a five-issue limited edition Spider-Punk series that's set within Earth-138, his home dimension. This series focuses on Hobie cleaning up the mess left in the wake of stopping Osborn. It features all sorts of cool punk rock versions of classic characters. Growing up, I happen to love punk music and heavy metal, so this is right up my alley. This series opens with Hobie fighting this universe's Kraven and his henchmen the Hunters. They're easily defeated by the duo before the general plot opens up a bit more, and we learn that Hobie leads a whole team he calls the Spider Band, and they operate out of a community rec center. The Spider Band is composed of Carl Morningdew, aka Captain Anarchy, Riot Heart, this universe's Riri Williams, Robbie Banner, their Hulk, and their friends Paulo and Rick, and also of course Hobie. The second issue sees them battle their universe's Taskmaster, complete with Danzig-era misfits Devilock, and in this battle we meet our final member of the Spider Band, Kamala Khan. After defeating Taskmaster, they learn that Oscorp had left a legacy of weaponry all over the country that they need to clean up if they had any hope of re-establishing some sort of hope in the world. They decide to take the Spider Band on tour in the Spider Van. Their tour takes them to Philly where they run across Matea Murdock, the daredevil drummer of 138, who needs help taking down the Kingpin, a ruthless club promoter. Hobie and team eventually track down the main data hub of Oscorp in Washington DC, and they find out that he is still alive as just a floating venom head inside of a battle suit. Planning to re-emerge as a martyr, Norman along with a whole host of other henchmen promptly beat the brakes off of the spider band and imprison them for a live execution. But some bands just produce hits no matter what the lineup is. Robbie Banner, their Hulk, shows up and helps turn the tides. In a last ditch move, Riot Heart amplifies Spider-Punk's guitar and overrides the new AI battle suits that his henchmen are using. The massive blast generated by Hobie incinerates Norman once and for all. The Spider Band once again saves America from Osborn. And that about wraps up the history of Spider-Punk. I think this character is poised to be a breakout star, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a huge uptick in his usage within comics, animation, video games, and possibly even live action. The Spider-Verse is wide open, and I think this character has really captivated audiences. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot, and if you did, consider doing all that junk YouTubers ask you to do, like liking, subscribing, turning on notifications. This has been Nick with Key Issues. Thanks again for watching, and remember the motto, Spider-Punk over everything.